Powered by Go Goat Sports in partnership with TSN, this is episode 44, season four of the Rain Regs Hockey Podcast. And it is presented by our title sponsor, Canadian Club Whiskey. Uh, joining us today on the podcast, this trade deadline now looms. We're recording on Tuesday, the deadline, 3 o'clock Eastern on Friday. Dave Nonis, former Toronto Maple Leaf general manager, general manager of the Vancouver Canucks, uh, he's going to step in and analyze some of the deals, Ray, that we've already seen, but then look at the dynamic, the logistics, everything that goes into this week and trying to do something both substantial or from a depth perspective. So uh, real good content coming up with Dave Nonis here on the Rain Regs podcast. Now, man, I, I feel like I'm swimming in mud, and that's the way this week is, right? You know, you're just buzzing. You're hearing this. You're hearing that. You're trying to connect dots. Um, not complaining again about the snow removal nonsense, but in a bit of an embarrassing moment. So wake up this morning, knew it was coming. I was prepared. You know, probably about six, eight inches of the heavy snow. Uh, get the blower out. You know, no problem. Get my driveway clean. Do the neighbor beside me. Do the the people across the street, couple of neighbors. Time is perfect. I'm talking to neighbors. You know, it's like 8 a.m. Eastern. I got a little bit of time getting some exercise. It's all great. Come back in. Now I've got to prep for the, the podcast. Run upstairs quickly. Um, and I look into the mirror in our in our ensuite. I'm like, I can, I, I got my pants on inside out. I literally spent an hour outside snow blown, talking to the neighbors and everything else. With And the only reason I knew is it's so obvious is my pockets were hanging down to like just above my knees. And I'm like, I mean, at least they're black, kind of Lululemon type of pants. So maybe it wasn't that obvious, but I was like, oh, boy, the trade deadline is really getting to me these days. <laughs> well, I, I wonder I wonder if well, your neighbors wouldn't have noticed because you would have had your jacket on. Yeah. Right? So you would have been safe there. And Holly's seen you looking like an idiot before. So that Multiple times, yeah. Yeah. So that would – but it, <laughs> how about that first – not saying that this happens often, but but I've been around the house and gone, eh, those pants are on inside out. Yeah, I've done it. You know, your pajama pants, and you're like, eh, no walk. Well. Yeah. But at least you're in the house. The walking around outside is a <laughs> you got other things on your mind, man. Well, and I, I so this is something that annoys me, and it happens probably three times a week. I'm I'm up early, as are you, obviously. Yeah. So I don't want to upset. Well, it's just Holly in the house now. <laughs> well, tiny sound asleep. So I go into the the closet. I just grab a t-shirt. I throw the t-shirt on to get downstairs, get the coffee machine going, feed the cat, all those things. Inevitably, at least three four times a week, I put the t-shirt on backwards, and my blood pressure goes. It's unbelievable. Spikes. It pisses you say me that. off. <laughs> unbelievable. You say that. I think as I get older, I can't get a damn shirt on the right way. And I look at it, you know, like when you pull the t-shirt out though, yeah. from whatever your drawer or wherever you've got it stored, I look at it and I'm like, okay, that's the back. I turn it around. I put it on. It's backwards. And I'm like, how did that even happen? And the fact that all I got to do is just turn it around. Right. I don't even have my arms in it yet. It makes me go, what the, oh, I, I, I can't believe you said that. That grumpy that old man. Is, oh That's my what God. we're heading for, buddy. I just want to get my shirt on man. and get downstairs for. Ah, anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, on to better things, and that's headlines. And there is so much going on. Um, look, let's start with the Toronto Maple Leafs, and it's pretty obvious now that the all-in applies to Kyle Dubas and what the Maple Leafs have done. I mean, pretty clear. The playoffs will determine whether or not it's been worth it. Two mammoth trades, Ryan O'Reilly, Noel Achari from the St. Louis Blues. You know, then they make uh, another deal with the Chicago Blackhawks, improve their blue line with Jake McCabe, you know, add some speed and depth, a little bit of grit in Sam Lafferty from the Chicago Blackhawks. But I feel like, even though it's premature, I feel like Kyle Dubas does deserve credit. A lot of managers deserve credit because they've added and they bettered their chances. But in Toronto, that's what it's all about. And, and Dubas has acknowledged this. He wants to give his core a better chance to succeed. Hard to ask for much more from a manager than that. I, I just, I, I'm really quite interested in the win or doom 
picture around Kyle Dubas in particular. Yes, it's around the Leafs, but it's around Dubas because he doesn't have a contract pass this year. And I really don't know what much more he could do um, to, to prep the team to be a playoff team, to be a really good playoff team. Right. Here's the thing, Drakes. So last three years, Tampa's been to the Stanley Cup final. Mm-hmm. They add Tanner Geno. Um, they have the best goalie in the game, in in my opinion, in, in Andre Vasilevsky. They have Victor Hedman, who hasn't had a great year, but he's still a core top end, top end defenseman. You've got Stamkos and Kucherov and Point up front. I mean, so they got to play Tampa. New Jersey adds Timo Meyer. The Rangers add Tarasenko. They're going to add Kane. Of those four teams, two of them are gone 10 days into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like it, sometimes the luck has to line up for you. The, um, your opponent has to line up for you. I don't know how, I don't know how there can be critique for what Dubas has done here. So I'll give you this example. In the past couple of years, I feel like the Leafs have added players that their reputation is $10. But what the Leafs got was a player worth $6. Mm-hmm. This year, they're adding players whose reputation is in a certain area, $10. Mm-hmm. They're getting players at that level. Right. Now, there's going to be a point where Ryan O'Reilly looks a little clunky and a little slow, but he's always been that. But he's really smart. He'll always do things to um, to work around his foot speed because he's j- that's just the way that he plays. Mm -hmm. Achari is going to play the same way, game one, game 90. doesn't matter. He runs over people, plays, he's strong, he's heavy, he's thick. He's a good penalty killer. Lafferty plays with energy and speed. I checked in on on Jake McCabe yesterday. I called a couple of people that I I know and just asked for an update. And they said the the one growth in McCabe's play has been he's kind of realized who he is. Mm. He doesn't try to play with the puck more than... He needs to, he gets it, he moves it, he plays, he competes. He's a really good, solid teammate. He is physical, but he's really kind of dialed in on what he is. Right. These are really good additions. Is it going to be enough? I got no idea. I told you, Dregs, before, I I worry about a scenario from a Toronto, and really, I don't really care, but I'll just say this. I worry about it from a Toronto scenario that they score six goals on Tampa three times in that series for their three wins, and Vasilevsky makes 45 saves the other four games. It's very possible it, it could happen. Yeah, And that's, I mean, there's the thin edge of where they're at. And if they get through that series, okay, then Boston's waiting for them. Yeah. Like, it, the, the road in the East is is potholed all over the place. And that's where I want to go, but you know what? I, I mean, it's like... <laughs> You know, we joked about grumpy old men, um, you know, talking about our clothing issues <laughs> earlier in the podcast. But it feels like we're screaming at the clouds when when we complain about the playoff matrix because that's what it is. And it doesn't seem like it's going to change anytime soon. However, you know, when you when you talk about entertainment and everything that the National Hockey League owners, players, all involved should be invested in, that should be it. How is it good for the sport in general, the growth of the sport in general, when you've got either the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are proven champions, you know, in a dynasty era, if you will, and the Toronto Maple Leafs. One of those teams is kicked to the curb after round one. Now, I I mean, it's been that way for how long? So, again, I'm, I'm defeating my argument here by saying why complain about it. I'm just, it's disappointing to me that, Contracts aren't going to be observed. Jobs potentially are at stake are going to be lost. You've got two organizations that couldn't be more all in. Couldn't be. Three if you throw the Bruins into that equation, right? And one, two teams uh, are going to be kicked aside. It's just, it doesn't seem like it's the right way to do things. No, uh, it doesn't. Uh, however, as my favorite comment, Bill, <laughs> com- comment Bill Burr says, however, um, here's the thing. There's a randomness to this as well. And what the randomness is, is the Leafs happen to 
acquire these core players, really great players, at the same time that Boston and Toronto or Boston and Tampa have Mm -hmm. their organization at, you know, running right on the red line. Like they're, yeah, yeah. The, the, so there's bad luck to this as well. The problem is the bad luck doesn't change in one year or two years. It's because if a team gets into a sweet spot with their, with their core, they're going to be good for a number of years by going to a different system where you end up with more close to like a one verse eight, something Mm. like that. Maybe the division winners are seated one verse two, and then everything else gets, um, you know, gets put in points. There would be further randomness to the matchups. Right. And I, I think that's more what people are looking at because this whole hope of driving divisions and uh, rivalries by staying in division, that would be great if the teams played each other more in the regular season. The right. fact that the Oilers yeah. and the Flames are done, the Rangers and the Devils are done, like it, it's kind of like they got a foot on either side of the fence with this thing. But it's not good that that Toronto, Tampa, Rangers, Devils, two of those four teams are out hmm. because they're four of the best teams in the league. We've got Dave Nonis joining us on the podcast. Uh, a number of things we're going to discuss: the future of Kyle Dubas in Toronto, hmm. whether that you know, weighs heavily one way or another on the outcome of that round one, likely against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Seems like a lock at this point. Um, we'll talk to him about just, again, the gymnastics, the mechanics of this week, trade deadline week, and everything that goes into it. And and also, I mean, we've we've heard about the, the Roberto Luongo trade that almost happened with the Leafs, but mm-hmm. we'll get to, uh, to Dave on that and kind of dig away at it. So we've talked about the arms race in the East, and, yep. you know, we're looking around. Pittsburgh hasn't done anything yet. Let's see if Hexy steps up. I mean, they're, they're clubs that – you know, you know who I'm us. looking at? You know Who's who I'm that? looking at? Yeah. Carolina. They will have not, to do something. They, yeah. But they won't get through the deadline without doing something. Agreed. Agreed. They they always seem to find a significant piece. Yeah. Somewhere. And it it's going to be somebody, I think, I have no information on this, but I think if the ad will be somebody we're not thinking about. Mm. Well, Look, I mean, they need a scoring help up front, right? Uh, so that's going to be part of the equation is a JVR. Tiger Bertuzzi back in the mix, which is interesting because Detroit lost that tough one versus Ottawa play again tonight. You know, as we record this on on Tuesday, tall ask for Bertuzzi, a first plus something. Um, maybe a bit of scoring pop there. I don't think that this guy is top priority for Carolina, but Donnie Waddell likes to weigh in on everything, right? So he's poked around on Jake Chikrin. The Oilers, we know are basically after any defenseman with a pulse. <laughs> you know, Eric but, but they do have the thought of, is this guy going to make us 3% or 5% better? Because if he is, then we're yeah. not going to do it. Right, right. If, if it's a significant player. So I, I guess what I'm it. saying is I see the Oilers making either a bigger move yeah. or not one. Right. And by bigger, you know, I, I don't... I, you you heard Eric Carlson's comments yesterday, yeah. right? Where he's and and it's 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 a well made point. He's a veteran player. He's got a no move. You know, he feels like if there was a trade coming, he would know about it and he would have been asked and consulted at this point. Um, so I'm not I'm I'm not dismissing Carlson's possibility. Or there's still time, but I do know the Oilers have invested a ton of time and have made a significant offer on Matthias Ekholm from Nashville. Yeah. You've got the Jake Chikorin interest which has been consistent and persistent. Um, but you do, isn't that, that's what you do. You start at the top of the ladder. Here's, here's priority A. And then in the meantime, you're working on priority B, C, D, because you may have to pull the trigger on C or D if you get to Thursday or Friday and you don't like what you're seeing from priority a or b that's what well it, I, I would assume you're sitting in there in the conversation if it comes back and it seems like it's getting more and more one-sided from you to them yeah now you start pivoting more so to other teams but don't forget that other general manager that you're talking to he's still got a phone as well mm. and so while you're waiting to see what he's saying to you you know he's talking to other people too right and you can't get caught holding the bag here that how many times trades do we get right near the end and that queue of trades yeah. to the league is 
10 long. It is. Because because everything it gets right to the end and that's when the GM's got to decide. Yeah. Is all this work they put in. There's going to come a moment yeah. Friday afternoon when they say yes or no to something. And then uh-huh. it is a flurry. You know what would yeah. be cool to see is to have a camera in an office to say, okay, right when a trade is made near the end of the deadline and to have this camera be able to capture all the activity that has to happen right when the general manager says, yes, do it. And he points at somebody and then it's got to be, I'm assuming it's chaos to get that thing into the queue to (laughs) finalize that deal in the way that the league can review it to say that the deal is okay. I think it would be fascinating. It's it's why we're on the air until six o'clock Eastern um, from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Because yeah, once the deadline closes at 3 p.m., that doesn't mean that is deadline over. You're right. I mean, there are dozens of trades that are in the queue and central registry Mm -hmm. has to chew through them all. Hey, here's something interesting. Chris Johnson just tweeted our colleague. The NHL released a memo to teams this morning saying that it will, quote, unquote, closely scrutinize trades where injured players are acquired with the intent of keeping them on LTIR, long-term injury, until the playoffs. Mm. This could impact the market for players like Nyquist, Sean Monaghan, Adam Henrique, mm. et cetera. So um, the league Explain is definitely that paying a bit, attention. Then, Drake. Explain that a bit. So that would be getting Nyquist. Yeah. Knowing that he's not ready until the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. Now, they're not banning it per se. They're just saying that it's got to be 100% on the up and up. And, and and look, people always look back to the Nikita Kucherov situation, right? Where he was skating mm-hmm. for weeks in Tampa Bay and then not available in the regular season, comes back for the playoffs and away he goes. But the NHL medical staff, head office medical people were in constant communication with the Tampa Bay Lightning medical people, right? What's going on? Where is this situation? So the league essentially had to sign off on that file, and they did. So I think really that's what this is, is a reminder of, okay, you can do it, but it needs to be on the up and up. And if Nyquist or Monaghan or or Adam Henrique are good to go with two, three weeks remaining in the regular season, that's your effing problem. Figure out your cap situation. That's that's how I interpret that messaging. So okay, you know, can I just throw something here? Maybe it's a little bit off, but yeah, kind of ahead. along the same thing. But if I'm Jacob Chikorin and I'm sitting around collecting dust here, waiting for a deal for the last two years, but now I'm not playing because we're waiting for a deal to happen and it's asset protection and all that stuff, trade protection. Yeah. Pretty quickly, I'm starting to think about a grievance here through the Players Association. I'm with you. Because I I know we don't swear on here. I think it's bullshit. Mm. I really do. Yeah. That if there's an imminent trade, sure, I get it. But Jacob Chikrin's has he been out two weeks? February 10th, I believe. Yeah. Right? So, so two that's, plus weeks. if it is, that's two weeks today. Yeah. No, it's more than two weeks. Like, yeah, seriously. Yeah. yeah. Like, I just, I understand. Look, I get it. I understand the protection. You don't want the guy to, to get hurt. However, it, at some point, there's got to be a, a balance to this a little yeah. bit. I don't know exactly how you would attack it. But if I'm Chikrin, I, I now I haven't played for two weeks. I'm going to get traded and go to a team that's fighting for a playoff spot. I've got to learn a system. Yeah. I've got to get back to game pace because I've been practicing never because teams don't practice as much anymore. Yeah. It's it's a weird spot. It really bothers me though that these guys are just sitting around and they'd like to get in. Loaded with information. Those are your Ray and Dregs hockey podcast headlines. Hey, thanks for tuning into our YouTube channel. And while you're here, why don't you do us a solid? Hit like and subscribe. Yeah, you'll get access to all the latest uploads. You can stay updated on the latest news and interviews from the Ray and Drags Hockey Podcast. It only takes a couple of seconds. And from what I'm told, it helps with our algorithm thingamajig. Anyway, we appreciate the support.